what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the redmi note 7 pro and today in this video i'm going to be showing you the latest cherry soys version 3.5.2 official build based on android 12 l or android 12.1 this is the 23rd march 2022 build and this of course includes the g apps and of course this one has a nix camera by default and here it shows that fixed a nix camera portrait here we have the call recording in google dialer and the other things you can see from right here of course the flashing guide including with all the other imported file links will be present in the description by the way this is how the settings panel looks like and if you scroll down more we have the about section but as you are noticing all the panels over here are separated just like this and here in the android version section we have the cherish logo right there and we have the android version as android 12 l but still the clock shows like the android 12 one of course and here if you make it to 12 o'clock this is how it looks let me go back we have the cherish os version mentioned over here again the maintainers over here are karthik and madhav so huge thanks to them for this amazing rom and we have the security patch as latest of march 5th 2022 here you can see the stock kernel as the 4.14.246 Litten kernel and we have the AC Linux status as enforcing and the build date here shows as March 22. Here in the system panel we have the system updater and of course you can check for updates whenever there is a new one I think because this is the official build. Also if you are noticing the icons on the sides they look a little bit different and we also have the developer options because I have enabled that. Also we get the thermal profiles as you can see right here you can change the profiles to benchmark browser camera dialer gaming or streaming let me go back we have the gestures and if you go into it we have the quick loop and camera then we also have the system navigation gestures if you go into the settings of it we have the pill length customization but there is no thickness customization as of right now we have the swipe to invoke assistant let me actually do this so yeah as you are noticing the swipe to invoke assistant is working fine we also have the full screen navigation gestures if you want that and two button and three button navigation both are there we have the normal things like the swipe to screenshot and stuff they are working great and of course there is the google lens suggestion and if you want to see the capture more option let me actually show you the capture more also appears just over here and as you are noticing it is working flawlessly no issues whatsoever and you can edit it even further if you want to just like this and you can mark some stuff just like this so yeah you can delete it share it to your friends or something like that now we have the live translate and the gboard is present by default here you shouldn't worry about that but first let me show you the home screen this is how it looks like to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page and scrolling through them is pretty fine but yes sometimes i have seen it lagging a bit because it is the redmi note 7 pro of course it's not that much powerful in today's age and this is how the quick setting panel appears and they look beautiful of course it has the android 12 l kind of animation if you're noticing how immersive it looks right here also if you're opening something like the screen recorder let me actually show you how like smoothly it opens so yeah you are definitely getting one of the most smoothest experiences of android 12 l over here now you might be wondering why i do have the charger plugged in because my device's battery health is not that good and my device has been randomly rebooting because of the battery i think so yeah it won't be happening to your device if your battery's health is not that much low but yeah for me my redmi note 7 pro's battery is very old and i think right now i need to change it or something so yeah i do have the charger plugged in just because my battery health is not very good by the way if you're wondering about the charging animation let me actually show you it looks beautiful right just notice how beautiful it looks so yeah the charging info also shows up on the bottom let me actually unlock with the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it unlocks swiping up of course gets you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular apps and here we have the widgets working fine the android 12 clock widget as you can see and this is how the animation appears in android 12 l it doesn't bounce around much if you're noticing i do have two apps opened over here in the recent panel the twitter and the play store app and over here if you want to split screen let me actually show you you can click on the apps icon then go into the split top then just click on the other app and this is how the split screen appears so yeah it looks beautiful and you can switch the apps just by double tapping on the middle just like this and you can of course scale them just like this and once you go home or something it stays in the recent panel and it stays on the same order where you left it so this is a great feature of android 12 and this is working perfectly you can have multiple apps grouped like this in the recent panel in android 12 l 
Talking about the quick setting panel, we have the Wi-Fi, mobile data and stuff. I don't have a SIM card in the device, that's why it shows like this disabled. And we have the screen recorder of Android 12, of course. And the Google Home or the smart home controls are there. The do not disturb is there. The auto rotate, the dark theme, everything is there. By the way, in the light theme, the quick setting panel stays like this in white theme. And in the edit section, you can edit and add multiple toggles from here, like the sound toggle, heads up toggle, etc. The always on display toggle is also there. Let me just add a couple of them. I don't see the FPS info toggle over here, but yes, you can disable the heads up or something. And there is a reboot toggle too, so you can directly reboot to the recovery. And also we have the always on display just from right here. Let me show you, this is how the always on display will look like if you enable it, but I'm not really sure why would you enable that on the Redmi Note 7 Pro because it doesn't have an AMOLED display, so yeah. So this is the problem of my battery if you're noticing. I'm not really sure if it's only on this ROM, but yeah, I have 91% juice left and on the bottom it shows charged. So yep, this is what the problem I'm facing and I'm not really sure if it's regarding the ROM or the battery, but I'm pretty sure my battery health is not that great. So again, this might be different experience for you. But for me, if I disconnect the charger, it will be like rebooting the device randomly. So yeah, that's happening for me at least. And in the wallpapers and styles, we have the wallpaper changing option and the accent colors of the wallpapers you can change. Also the basic colors of course are there, the dark theme, the themed icons, all the things are there. And here if I disable the theme, like these themed icons, let me actually show you, this is how it will look like. And by the way, I'm using a wallpaper app for this wallpaper over here. You can get it from the description and also the ANX camera. Let me actually show you that now. So this is how it looks and yes, the portrait mode is actually working over here, I guess, as you are noticing. Let me take a quick picture and let's take a 48 megapixel picture too. So yes, as you can see, I opened the photo with the Gallery Go app and that is actually working fine. The 48 megapixel mode also is working and it is a 16.55 MB photo size. Let me show you, this is actually working perfectly fine. If I zoom in, just notice how much details are there. Let me just zoom it out. And just notice the 48 megapixel mode is actually working. Even the portrait picture I think has worked if you're noticing the background blur and stuff with the rear camera. And if I go to the front camera now, and yes, as you can see the front camera selfies should be working great. Even the portrait photo, let me actually take one. The background is not that blurry. And if you're noticing, if I go into the info, this is a 0.7 megapixel photo. So yeah, it takes some time, I guess. And as you can see on this one, the portrait mode actually worked. So you have to give it some time, I guess. So yeah, the portrait pictures are right now working and I think it is a normal size picture. And as you can see, this is a 13.2 megapixel photo. So yeah, the portrait pictures are working, but you have to give it some time. As you can see on this one, it didn't take properly. So yeah, portrait pictures should be working great if you give it some time. But yes, on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, it is a sluggish experience overall and in the video settings. And here we of course have the 4K 30 FPS option. So yes, if you want to shoot 4K 30 FPS for some reason, you can definitely do that with the rear camera. And with the front camera, you can shoot up to 1080p 30 FPS videos. So yeah, that should be working fine here. The ANX camera is present by default. That's enough, I guess. And it is almost working perfectly fine here. And that's just amazing in Android 12 L2. Talking about the basic functionality, let me actually show you the IR Bluster should be working great if you're noticing that. Also, it passes the safety net test right out of the box, so you can use banking apps over here. The DRM info also stays L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. It should not be a problem here. Right now, let me jump back into the settings, and here, this is how it looks like, of course, and we have the cherry settings. There you will get a bunch of customizations, and here in the status bar, we have the double tap to sleep, the traffic indicators, the clock style, everything is there, and we have the clock and date customization too, so you can thoroughly customize the clock and date. The Volte icons, the VO Wi-Fi icons, everything can change over here. Combined signal icons are also there and the color status bar icons are also there. But yes, it is enabled by default. I disabled it and we have the battery icon. And from here, you can change the battery icon to these many options. And even the percentage, you can change from right here. And inside status bar items, we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons. We have the quick setting and here we have the date and stuff. And we have the battery estimates. Also, the brightness slider you can customize from right here. You can have the brightness slider on the bottom if you want to, just like me. Let me go back. We have the themes and we have the use pure black. So this is for the AMOLED display especially. But yes, if you want to have the pitch black, you can definitely have that with this option. And the monet theme engine is also there. You can customize the white luminance and stuff. The dark theme you can also enable from right here. The headline and body fonts options are there. And you get plethora of fonts if you're noticing. 
Now we also have the icon packs and it actually shows which icon packs are which ones and even the icon shapes you can see from right here and there are a plethora of options. Even the signal icons you can see from right here and the Wi-Fi icons too you can see from right here. So yes, considering this is an Android 12 LROM, it has huge amount of customizations. Inside buttons we have the reorient, the volume rocker wick and stuff and the long press power button toggle torch is there. Let me go back. Also we have the volume steps I forgot to show you and we have the other things like the animations and stuff the whole UI animation you can change we also have the screen of animation too if you want to enable that let me scroll down we have the lock screen here we have the double tap to sleep and the double tap to wake on those and stuff then the lock screen charging info and the other things let me actually scroll down we have the power menu and here we have the advanced reboot so if i haven't showed you that if you click on the advanced you can directly reboot to the recovery fast boot or just reboot the system ui inside notifications we have the vibrate on connect call waiting and disconnect then the blink flashlight for incoming calls and the battery charging light or the battery led is also there the notification led option and the heads up you can enable or disable from right here and less annoying heads up are also there let me go back here we have the misc settings the charging animation you can enable from right here but it is enabled by default i think in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the adaptive or auto brightness the lock screen customizations are also there and we have this face unlock option so you can set it to like automatically unlock whenever the screen wakes up or you can just have it on swipe up unlock and we have the double line clock over here then the double tap to wake and the wake up on plug you can disable if you want to the display cutout option is there for some reason also there is the ambient display settings if you want to enable the wake up gestures let me go to the color settings here we have the color changing option and of course you can customize the rgb control over here we have the font size display size etc and of course you can have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes inside battery settings this is how it looks like we also have the battery temperature option and the battery usage is there but let me tell you if you want to have good battery life i would say change your battery hardware and if you have already done that i would say you can get about four to five hours of screen on time easily over here you shouldn't be having any issues if your battery's health is actually good but my battery health is very bad so i'm not even talking about my screen on time if your battery's health is good you are gonna get about five plus hours of screen on time in my opinion and the fast charging should be working great for you too inside sound and vibration we have all these options like the ring volume etc left volume panel is there so right now if i press the volume it's just appearing on the right side still not really sure why let me do that okay so right now if you're noticing it has been appearing with the left side so you can toggle it off or on if it's like not working properly adaptive sound then the smart pause and stuff and the volume panel timeout you can also customize let me scroll down we have the part app volume controls then we have the me sound enhancer if i go into it we have the me audio direct and from here you can have all these headphone options and i would suggest going with the youth edition the sound quality for the headphone jack and bluetooth as well should be good enough over here you shouldn't be having any issues with the sound quality on this rom also there is the clear speaker option if you want to use that let me go back and we have the utilities and there is the accessibility kind of settings and you can change whatever things you want to like the ring vibration and the notification vibration and stuff if you want to change those you can let me jump into the security settings this is how it looks like and if you go into fingerprint and face unlock option we have the face unlock right here and of course you can set up the face unlock let me actually do that right now so it is showing that all set but from here you have to verify it's you in apps so i have turned it off and this allow face unlock i would suggest it going with the swipe up otherwise it will always unlock over here with the face unlock so that's very annoying but yeah i have already completed the setup of the fingerprint so let me actually double tap on the status bar by the way we have the like pixel launcher over here so that's why there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but of course double tap to sleep on the status bar is present and double tapping over here as you can see wakes up the screen but if i swipe up only then it will recognize my face and as you can see it unlocks just notice how fast it unlocks let me try one more time i'm just using the face unlock by the way and as you can see it unlocks so yeah the face unlock speed should be good enough over here and it shouldn't be giving you any issues also talking about the fingerprint scanner here let me actually show you So yeah, very fast and snappy fingerprint scanner experience overall, I would say, and it shouldn't be having any issues. And as you can see, it unlocks 100% of the time. So no issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner on this particular ROM.
Overall, the normal performance and stuff should be good enough, but if you're coming from a newer device, of course, it will feel sluggish on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. But yeah, overall, the experience is very good with Android 12. And if you want to see the benchmarks here are the Android 12 Geekbench score on this particular ROM with a CPU stress test. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.